Right, it's that time again. Let's look at all the spring anime of 2023. To start us off, we have the return of Kimetsu no Yaiba, also known as Demon Slayer. This time, it's the Swordsmith Village arc. I am a Chad Alpha Sigma male based NFT investor mastermind who has read the manga already, so I already know what has happened and I can tell you, without dropping any spoilers, that it is one of the more chill arcs as far as I can remember. Still really cool though, I can see a lot of anime wallpapers springing up from this one. And also a lot of edgy. Next up, we finally have the return of anime's biggest edgelord scientist in Dr. Stone New World. I'm looking forward to this one. I really dislike Senku's edgelord mannerisms, but apart from that, the show was very enjoyable. Definitely an anime to watch if you haven't already. This time, the new Stone Agers have built a boat. That's pretty cool if you ask me. Let's just hope that no one up there saws it in half. That would be a shame. Anyway, moving on, we have Tony Kakukawai second season. I won't spend a lot of time on this, I started season 1 since it had the same font on the cover as Watakai, and I thought it would be similarly good. It wasn't. If you are going to watch season 2, then have fun I guess. Yeah. But now we have something that looks really very interesting, Jigaraku Hell's Paradise. I just read the short summary on my anime list and it sounds really rather good. Have a listen. Gabimaru the Hollow, a ninja from Iwagakura village, known for being cold and emotionless, was set up by his fellow ninjas and is now on death row. Tired of killing and betrayal, he wants to die. However, no method of execution works on him because as much as the seemingly apathetic Gabimaru refuses to admit it, he does have a reason to live. He wants to return to his wife, who was the reason why he softened up and failed to be an effective assassin. Thus, he refuses to die. A Simon, the decapitator, a famous executioner, sees this and has a proposal for the ninja. He wants Gabimaru to join an expedition to an island south of Japan in search of an elixir of life, in exchange for a full pardon by the shogunate. However, this island isn't a normal island, it's believed to be paradise. Once again, however, this island is full of mysteries and the exploring team, consisting of those marked for death, might not be fully prepared to handle them. And that story combined with the art style sounds and looks awesome. You can't tell me otherwise. Definite watch. Next! Next up, we have a Konosuba spin-off featuring Megumin. This could be very exciting. Personally, I don't know what to expect. Megumin works very well in the current character dynamic in Konosuba, but this has been taken away since it's a prequel. I'll definitely keep my eye on it though. The next anime we have on our list is slightly fucked. I know, who am I kidding? It's completely fucked up. Basically, there's this 16 year old idol called Ai who is super popular and one day she shows up at a gynecologist's office in the countryside somewhere, pregnant. The gynecologist is a huge fan of hers and helps her through to a safe delivery. However, a mysterious character then kills the gynecologist. Amazingly good story writing at that point, totally concise. Anyway, the gynecologist then gets reincarnated as one of the twins that I, the idol, has born. He then makes it his mission to protect Ai's smile in the harsh world of showbiz. That is so fucked. You literally have a fucking grown ass man who is already a huge fan of a 16 year old idol, which is weird enough. Weird enough, but then he pops out of a vagina and lives with her. This isn't an anime, it's a fucking idol fan's wet dream. Who approved of this? Who? Oh, and it doesn't just sound bad, this isn't just some misunderstanding. I watched the trailer, knowing what would happen next, and I felt physically uncomfortable. Especially this scene. Just watch this. Oh boy. Alright, let's recover from this horror by looking at some second seasons that we are getting. We have The Ranking of Kings with Yuki no Tarabako, which if you translate it to Finnish using Google Translate means Organinen Ariakku. Hope that helps. We also have season 2 of The Ancient Magus Bride, a series that I've wanted to dip my toes into for a while but never really got round to. But uh, here's the season 2. Maybe I'll start watching it now. Fairy Tale is also getting a second season. This time the guild appears to be located in space for some reason. Oh, wait, it's Eden Zero, never mind. Speaking of Zero, a second season I have zero interest in is Birdie Wing Golf Girls Story Season 2. You want me to explain why? I don't think that's really necessary. Gundam is also getting a second round of being able to sell really expensive models. <clears throat> I mean, a second season for Gundam, The Witch for Mercury, yay! And finally, it's time for the award called, oh wow, it got a second season. And the award goes to... In Another World With My Smartphone 2! 
I'm always surprised when an isekai that relies solely on one interesting twist, like the smartphone, gets a second season, and in this case, this isekai has managed it, which kind of makes me want to check it out. That's it for season 2's, now it's time to talk about a season 1 that I've already talked about on this channel. What? You can't remember? Maybe that's because you haven't subscribed yet! You should definitely subscribe to the Lenny AW channel for cutting edge, unbiased anime reportership. I've got like, comments on my videos saying that I'm really good and you can like 100% trust strangers on the internet. So what are you waiting for? But back to the anime I wanted to talk about. It's called Mashal of Magic and Muscles. I'll link the full video I made in the description, but what you really need to know is that Mash Burn Dead doesn't possess magic powers, but does possess the strength of Saitama instead. However, he faces persecution due to it being illegal to not have magic powers in his world. The story follows Mash as he overcomes the hurdles of being a non-magic user, and if I had to give you a vibe of the entire series, I would describe it as a One Punch Man meets Harry Potter, kind of. Wait, wait, no, what, what kind of? Exactly that. It's exactly One Punch Man meets Harry Potter. Nothing else to it. Extremely funny though. Also making a debut on the anime scene is Loving Yamada at level 999, a story about a gamer girl who gets cheated on by a gamer boyfriend. While she is blowing off some steam by killing mobs in an online game, she encounters Yamada, who has the ultimate Sigma male grind set of being max level in an MMORPG and not knowing how to talk to women. And being really very unsociable. Where have I seen that before? Oh, here. Gotcha. <laughs> Next up we have an anime that I believe will blow everyone out of the water this spring. It is called My Home Hero and I'm not going to say too much since I'm making an entire video on it, which you can look out for next week, but what I can say is that it is one of the most gripping crime stories I have ever read. If you don't want to watch my video on it, that's fine. Please just give My Home Hero a go, I promise you won't regret it, it's going to be an absolute classic. Moving on, we have Kimi no Hokagu Insomnia, or Insomniacs After School, a story about two school kids who are insomniacs and hang out in the astronomy club at night. At first I thought it sounded like something I would find boring and bad, but after seeing the trailer it actually looks rather heartwarming, I'm going to check it out. Next up we have Otonari ni Jinja. Here's a bit of an interesting premise. Ichiro Kuga is a struggling mangaka who is trying to make ends meet for his younger siblings after their father died. But when his two assistants quit, he is left in a big pinch. That's when Shiori Goshiki appears as his new assistant and she is extremely competent. However, there is something otherworldly about her and soon after they meet, she announces that they are now engaged. It sounds like it could be a fun rom-com and I like the look of the animation style. My only worry is that it's going to be just like Tony Kaku Kawaii and I would absolutely hate that. Coming up next we have Skip to Lofa, and I remember that I read some of the manga but it didn't leave a lasting impression on me. As far as I can remember it's a very comfy rom-com so you might as well give it a try if you have nothing else to watch but be warned it's probably not going to be the best show ever. Next up we have something for all you weirdos who like lollies and no it's not a tutorial on how to get off your local register. It's the idol master Cinderella Girls, doesn't that just sound like the anime of the year? But what's this? Look guys, it's Blue Period, my favourite anime about classical arts that has the word blue in the title. Hmm? What's that? This is Blue Orchestra? Oh well, same difference, huh? In this one you can just replace every mention of painting from Blue Period with the word violin, as far as I can tell. The Japanese sure love calling artsy things blue, huh? Second to last, we have Megami no Cafe Terrace. Cafe Harem! Cafe Harem! And finally, we have Edomai Elf. It's an otaku elf that lives in a shrine and demands video games, snacks and energy drinks. And to me that sounds eerily similar to one of the animes that I despise the most. Anyway, that's it for all the spring 2023 anime. I hope you have found something interesting here to watch. Uh, without further ado, thank you very much for watching. Cheers!